Hey, Elder Legal Warriors, this video is particularly important to me. This video, I'm going to cover how hard it is to be accused of a crime and strategies and uh, methods to try to get us through a situation where us or a loved one or someone we care about is accused of or being investigated for a crime. Super serious. It's pretty much what I've focused on my whole career. So stay tuned. This is the video for you. My name is attorney Lance Fryer. I'm a defense attorney in Linwood, Washington. My law firm's been defending people charged with crimes all throughout Washington State for more than 20 years and putting out these videos to help educate the public. So if you find this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get the help they need. I'm just going to jump right into it. It is so hard and difficult when we are accused of a crime, especially if it's the first time we've ever been in trouble for something. It feels like our life is over. It feels like there's no end in sight and it feels like it's all or nothing. And that's sort of how our brain is designed to work, right? It's sort of a fight or flight um, or freeze. And uh, uh, many of us freeze in a situation where we get accused, where we're ashamed, we're embarrassed, and um, our, our sort of natural uh, brain instincts really work against us and make it even more difficult to sort of uh, live any type of normal life or survive a situation where we're accused of a crime. And I'm just gonna go through um, what pops in my head as far as uh, what I think, what I tell clients, what my experience is, some of you may know, I've been in a lot of therapy and counseling myself over the years, uh, more than 12 years of uh, a process group therapy, which has been really useful for me uh, battling my own anxieties and own uh, you know, worries when I'm helping so many people fight against the government, fight to get their lives back. So like one of the most important things to do, and it seems trite, but it's not, is to stay positive. Think about things logically. There are tens of thousands of people in Washington State, probably a hundred thousand or more. I don't even know. I don't know how many. They get charged with the crime, get arrested for DUI, they get an assault, they get a theft or whatever every year, and they're still here. They're still here. They still have food. They still have shelter for the most part. Um, you know, they have made it through. So if they made it through, you can make it through too. So whatever we think is going to happen is more likely to happen because we think that way. So if we think things are going to be terrible and it's hopeless, well, it may turn out terrible and be hopeless. If we think um, that uh, things uh, can be solved and that I am the type of person that solves problems, we tell ourselves an identity statement. I'm the type of person that gets through tough situations. If we tell ourselves those identity statements, we're more likely to take steps consistent with that identity. We take steps consistent with our self-identity. Um, so we want to stay positive. How can we do that? Well, um, we could uh, look at certain books, right, to help us. You've heard me cover a couple books in this channel. One is The Obstacle is the Way. The Obst Obstacle is the Way is sort of a, a stoic type book, stoicism, where it's like, hey, the best way around an obstacle is actually through it. We have to walk through it. And that reminds me of a quote. Uh, I think Jack Canfield said once, everything you want is on the other side of fear. Okay? And, and that's true. If we just run from the fear, you know, um, that makes sense if a lion's chasing us, but a lion's not chasing us, right? We have a situation we need to deal with. Let's take steps to deal with it. Um, um, another book you've heard me talk about, which I'm very passionate about, is the uh, Four Agreements, right? Um, the Four Agreements uh, is a, sort of a way to look at the world, a way of living. Um, and uh, I definitely highly recommend uh, you look at it. Some of the agreements are uh, don't make assumptions, right? Don't make assumptions about what's going to happen. If we just assume something bad's going to happen, we suffer so much, right? Um, we We want to do uh, many different things uh, in that's recommended in that book to try to you know have a better outcome as we move forward. A quote that sort of uh, is reminiscent of that is, you may not control all the events that happen to you, 
and you can decide to not be reduced by them. In other words, what's going on in a criminal case does not define you, right? You define you. And it's important that we remember that going forward. Um, so while we stay positive and why we look for inspiration and other places to stay positive, what else do we want to do? Well, you want to trust in your friends and family. Well, Lance, how can I possibly ever talk to my friends and family about a criminal situation? Well, that's pretty common where I don't want anyone to know. I don't want my partner to know. I don't want my parents to know. Um, and that makes sense because we're afraid of many different things. Maybe they'll think less of us. Maybe they'll put us down and belittle us. But for the most part, if you've chosen well in your partner or if you have uh, you look at your family accurately, sometimes and more often than not, people won't let you down in your time of need. Generally speaking, people want to help people. And I always tell my clients, we don't get to make the decision for our loved ones of what the best outcome is for them. They might be really mad that you didn't rely on them for help. They may be really, really mad that you didn't reach out to them to say, hey, uh, I need some emotional support. So think about that. There's going to be someone in your life that you can share this with, not you know the gory details of the case, but what you're going through to try to get some help. You can also look at a professional. I've already shared with you, I use professional counselors and have for more than a decade to help me be better, to help me learn about how we work and how my brain works and therefore probably how other humans' brains works, my clients, right? And so, um, you know, the best thing you can invest in is yourself. And that's one thing you can do, invest in yourself. What's next? Well, get a legal team and then trust them, right? Um, we hopefully trust our doctor to treat us to do surgery, right? If I need heart surgery, um, I'm going to go find someone I trust and I'm going to then leave it to them and follow their instructions, right? Before the surgery, they tell me not to eat anything for 24 hours. I'm not going to do that, right? I'm going to listen to them. I'm not going to eat anything. Find a legal team you can trust. You know, you can read reviews. You can talk to them if they care about you. And most criminal attorneys do. Criminal attorneys are a different type of attorney. They want to protect people from the government, right? They want to save lives. Trust your legal team. Ask them what uh, they, you should do. And don't be afraid to share your anxiety. Let me tell you, twice yesterday, I had clients call me and I was out of touch with their anxiety. I've been doing this so long that I was out of touch about how scary it can be. And, you know, I, I was clearly not my best self. It was a long, hard day, long, hard week. Um, but they were really kind to me, not that how they talked to me, they didn't sound too happy with me, but they were kind that they shared with me that they were anxious and that um, then I could hear that and I could you know, do something to alleviate that anxiety and ask some questions. Well, why are you anxious? What are you afraid is going to happen? And then all of a sudden I remembered, hey, it's my job to make sure that you feel better. And I was able to do that. And so um, us attorneys are just people and we are under, especially the, the ones that are popular, we're under a lot of pressure to help so many different people. So but don't be afraid, hopefully in a kind way, to speak up and say, hey, I'm really nervous. Can you help me? Okay. And hopefully the question you get back is, what are you nervous about? Hopefully it's not, you shouldn't be nervous. Okay. Um, what are you nervous about? And then we can talk about how it is that your legal team can make sure those fears that you have never happen. Okay. Because, um, again, we're talking about alleviating anxiety, trying to get through a criminal matter rely on your legal team. Next, take care of yourself, right? Self-care is important. Now, um, take a look at this. See this blonde hair? If you watch all my videos, it's not so blonde, right? So that was part of me taking care of me, believe it or not. I was going to get my hair cut two days ago and one of my amazing team members said, Lance, are you get your hair highlighted? It's summer. And I thought, why not? I might feel a little better. It's a little fun. It makes me, it gives a little more you know, people can comment on it, stuff like that. You know, maybe I look a little younger, who knows? But you know, that was a form of self-care for the anxiety that I was feeling at the time. And um, that doesn't mean go out and buy a car, but, you know, we want to make sure, you know, that uh, um, we take care of ourselves, that we eat right, that we sleep right, that we don't abuse alcohol, that we 
you know, see a medical professional if we need to, that we take a walk in nature and connect with something real, right? What's real? The trees are real. The stream is real. The case is just a thing. The case is just a thing that's going to come and go. It's not going to come and go is the oxygen in your lungs, the, the sun in the sky when it comes and go in Seattle, you know, the fresh air, the birds, um, those things are real. We need to get grounded with nature to get out of the spin in our heads about the terror that we feel from this type of situation. It's important that we take care of ourselves. I think uh, the final thing we can do to control anxiety is to get educated, but not with lawyer Google. Lawyer Google is a bunch of lawyers selling stuff, trying to tell us, you know, in some reason, things that are true, but also in a way that sort of amps up the anxiety because amping up anxiety, what's it do? And increases the pressure to buy something, doesn't. You're already anxious enough. So if you're going to do your research, talk to some lawyers, talk to some people that have been through it. If you got a friend who's been through a DUI, um, go to YouTube. You can watch more of my videos. Hopefully you agree these videos aren't trying to sell you stuff. They're telling you 30 years of what I've learned and 50 years plus of what I've lived. And I'm no end all be all, but hopefully um, I can give you some sort of unvarnished uh, version of my experience uh, of, of dealing with uh, all types of people in these situations. Um, you know, every walk of life, every age, every race, um, every profession. And guess what? Every one of my clients is still walking around, right? And most of them are better off now uh, than when they met us. And that probably leads to the final quote that comes to mind. Um, and it sort of goes with leaving people better. Just remember, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. That's Albert Einstein. In the middle of this difficulty lies an opportunity to improve, an opportunity to uh, come out better on the other side, an opportunity to learn from whatever happened. That's what I want you to remember. You can get through this. So if you found this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get the help they need. More importantly, if you've got a legal problem, a criminal matter in Washington State, feel free to give my office a call. Listen to what happened, we'll identify a way forward, and we will be there for you. Thank you.